everyone, so this darling number is Franny Baby Bear Children's Corner, and I am loving this simple pattern. Like every other children's corner pattern, the pattern isn't netted, so there's no tracing involved, and you gotta love that. And it goes together oh so cleverly. <laughs> so to begin, you'll cut out two front pieces on the fold and two back pieces on the fold. And I'm making the six month size and I'm just barely able to squeeze cutting the front and back off the same width if they are offset a smidgen. So you can see that I have the selvage edges touching in the middle so there's a fold on each outside edge here. And once everything is cut out, I've got two front pieces cut on the fold as well as two back pieces cut on the fold. And then I have one bloomer front cut on the fold and one bloomer back piece cut on the fold as well. Then I took my back piece and matched it up to my front piece and with the right sides together I took it to my sewing machine and sewed across the shoulder seams. I used 3 8 seam allowance. Now I think the pattern called for quarter inch seams but the extra eighth inch doesn't really affect the fit but it does make the seam more sturdy in my opinion. And in my book I only tend to use quarter inch for a construction seam if it's being quilted on top since the quilting adds more strength but anywho, you do you. <laughs> then you can iron the shoulder seams open and I repeated the same thing to the lining pieces joining them at the shoulder seams. Once the seams are ironed open I matched up the lining on top of the dress so I could cut a slit down both the lining back and the dress back at the same time and this way the slit will line up. I used the iron middle mark as a guide and cut about five inches down. This looked like a good amount for a six month baby to fit through comfortably. Now this is an optional set, but not really because how adorable is this trim? It's a bias tape with a sort of serge treatment of some sort that makes like a little scallop edge. And like normal bias tape, it's slightly wider on one side than on the other so you can sew through the narrow side and ensure that you're going through both sides. So if you're using this to finish a raw edge or something like that. But in my case, I'm just going to sew up the edges of the bias band to the raw edge of the neckline and sew around. I'm sewing right below where the scallops are sewn. Of course, you could do lace, piping, whatever, instead of this bias trim stuff. It's sewing, you do you. Then you're going to match up the lining to the dress. I started to sew on one side of the slit around the neckline and back down on the other side of the slit. When you get to the bottom of the slit, pivot by putting your needle down and turning your work. Then you can trim down to the point of the slit just before you get to those stitches. And <laughs> make sure you don't cut through those stitches. Then I trimmed up each side of the slit as well as trimmed the corners up and cut some slits around the curve of the neckline. Then you can turn your garment right sides out and pushing the corners up. And I actually got a tool for this as a stocking present. I know, fancy stuff. <laughs> then give everything a real good ironing before moving on to the armholes. Okay, ignore the clip marks in my armholes. I did that prematurely. But you'll sandwich your dress together between the lining and the dress with the right sides together. This is going to allow you to sew the arms hole together, finishing that edge nicely. And once you sew it and clip the curves, you'll be able to unfold your dress if you will. I hope all of that is making sense. Repeat the same process to the other side and make sure to iron all of that really well. Next, you'll take the lining pieces from the same side of the dress and match them up, making sure that the armhole part is matched up and continue to match up that part of the dress. So on one side of the dress, you'll sew the dress completely, but on the other, you'll leave a small hole in the lining part. This hole should be big enough to fit your hand through or at least your index finger and thumb. You'll sew down the dress side over the armhole to the lining side. Skip a few inches before beginning to sew again. Meanwhile, on the other side, just sew from the dress side straight through to the lining side. There's no gaps here. Then you can iron all of the seams and I clip the area underneath the armhole too. Now this next part is really clever and I've never seen anything like it. So that gap, well you're going to take the hem with the right sides together and pull it through the gap to sew. I'm trying to show that clearly here before I attach the trim. I'm pulling through one side seam with the seam lined up and the right side together. Isn't that neat? You should have seen me at my machine doing this step. Seriously, I was like freaking out. <laughs> so backing up, I attached some of this box leaf trim. Farmhouse also sells a variety of this stuff and it happened to come in this cherry fabric too. So I sewed that all the way around and to finish the edges, I pulled some of the stitches out of the trim and turned the fabric from the trim under to form a finished folded edge on both sides and then I sewed that down. So again, match your hemline right sides together and then pull it through that gap. Take it to your machine and sew it down. 
I did this in amazement. Seriously, I thought it was the coolest thing since sliced bread. So just keep pulling out more fabric as you sew more of the hemline until you get all the way around the dress. Then you can turn the dress right sides out and we are almost done at this point. So the pattern calls for button holes on either side of the side seams so you can insert some ribbon to use to cinch the underarm area down. However, I cringed at the idea of putting buttonholes underneath the arm with all this bulk. Instead, I sewed a casing from one under half of the arm hole to the other under half. Now, it's not an exact science if you haven't noticed. Once I had one side of the casing sewn, I used the first row of stitches as a guide to sew the second row of stitches. I sewed the second row of stitches about 3 8 of an inch away from the first row. Then I measured about 3 inches of elastic and attached it to a safety pin. Using that gap in the lining as an access, I fed the elastic through the casing. When you feel the end of the elastic is about a quarter of an inch, at least a quarter of an inch away from the start of the casing, take it to your machine and sew it down. Then continue to feed the elastic through until you get to the other side. Again, sew this down with about a quarter of an inch sticking out on the other side. You don't want those stitches to pull through after some wear and tear. So I removed the safety pin and then you'll just have that gap to finish up. And I finished up this by hand. I double threaded a needle and used the loop part to join to my fabric. This eliminates a knot. And if you see my other videos, you know that I'm not a fan of construction knots. So then I took my needle from one side over to the other side, up horizontally through the fabric, across to the other side, just repeat this process until I got to the top. This way all of the stitches are hidden. I think it's better than whip stitching in my opinion. So at the top I had to tie off using a small knot since I couldn't think of another method. And then I stuck my needle out away from the knot so I could cut my threads off and have the tail disappear between the fabric and lining of the dress. Then I added a button to the top of the dress using a button loop, which I have a video on how to do that I'll link below. I know it's not as practical as the fake button snap combo, but I figured it was only one button. I did do the fake button snap combo for this other dress and it sort of looks bunched a little bit because you can see this dress is designed for the back to come flush not overlap. Now sure it's not the worst thing and you can barely tell when she put her on a wiggly baby but just FYI I wanted to show you the two versions. So on to the bloomers and I made this completely different than what the pattern calls for. So I first cut a little tab area if you will. I just laid the bottom crotch area onto the selvage edge of the fabric and cut out the same shape. If you don't have enough selvage edge, that's no big deal. You can just turn your raw edge under twice and I'll get into more on that in a minute. So first you're drawing the front of the bloomers to the back of the bloomers using French seams and I have a detailed video on how to do those seams that I'll link below. I press the French seams towards the back of the bloomers and iron them in place. Then you can turn the top of the bloomers down about a half inch and iron that all the way around. Then you can turn it again another half inch and iron that all the way around. Then I like to take a little clipping of some ribbon and loop it around to place it in the back section. This is an easy way to tell the back from the front, especially if your husband is dressing your little one. So stitch the casing all the way around, leaving a few inches open. You'll want a gap so you can insert your elastic through. Once you're done sewing, cut a piece of quarter inch elastic to line. I use a safety pin to feed this elastic through the casing. I also pinned the end of the elastic to the bloomers so it wouldn't pull through. Now you could use a safety pin if you'd rather, just whatever you happen to have laying around. When you finish feeding the elastic through, match up the ends and sew them together. Then I trimmed them up about a quarter of an inch and let the elastic fall into the casing. Then you can sew that gap closed. Now you can take those little crotch tabs, as I've so eloquently named them, and sew the top part to each crotch section with right sides together. Once you're done sewing, you can clip around the curves and iron that so it lays nicely. If you weren't able to cut your tabs on the selvage edge, just turn your raw edge under twice and iron it down. Regardless, sew along that top edge, whether it be a folded edge or a selvage edge, so it will stay in place. Then I took this little bias band trim stuff again. Remember, it is narrower on one side than on the other. It's designed to be sewn on the narrower side. That way you can be certain you're catching the other side as you sew. So I turn under the raw edge about a quarter of an inch and pin that to the leg hole of the bloomer. I took that to my machine and again sewed it with the narrow side of the bias band trim facing up. This way I know that I'm catching that other side of the trim. And when I got to the other end, I cut my trim up so I have about a quarter of an inch to fold under and sew that in place. 
this is pretty neat trim stuff and as you can see all of the stitches are nice and neat on both sides of the bloomers. Then I cut two pieces of elastic and these will be used for the legs. I use safety pins to feed the elastic through the trim. How neat, right? I think it's tighter than zigzagging of the elastic, plus the elastic isn't touching the baby's soft skin. So once you get to the end of the elastic, sew it in place so there's another quarter inch or so sticking out on the other side. Then continue to feed this until you get to the other side and sew that in place. Now this crotch tab that I introduced to the pattern allows you to put the snaps to close the crotch instead of a French seam. It's a much more practical way when it comes to diaper changes. And here is my precious girl covered in cherries. Could you just eat her? Seriously, this would be adorable for Valentine's Day or really anything. If y'all have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. As always, I appreciate y'all for watching and I hope to catch y'all next time.